the A-10 Thunderbolt II, often affectionately referred to as the Warthog, is a relic from the Cold War era, a time when the world was gripped by the threat of Soviet expansion. Designed primarily for one purpose, to destroy enemy tanks, the A-10 has continually defied predictions of its obsolescence. Despite being rooted in the 1970s, this iconic aircraft has remained a formidable presence on the battlefield, constantly evolving to meet the demands of modern warfare. In a world where drones are becoming the dominant force in aerial combat, the question arises, can this old school attack jet, designed long before drones even existed, be adapted to take on the modern menace of unmanned aerial vehicles? Surprisingly, the A-10's unique design and attributes might just make it an ideal contender for this new role. The Genesis of the A-10 in the late 1960s, the U.S. Air Force was focused on developing supersonic jets for high-speed, high-altitude combat. However, a group of engineers at Fairchild Republic, led by Alexander Cartvelli, had a different vision. They believed that what the Army needed was not a fast, fragile fighter, but a slow, durable aircraft that could provide close air support for ground troops. This vision led to the creation of the A-10 Thunderbolt II, an aircraft that was intentionally designed to be both tough and simple. Its mission was clear, fly low over over the battlefield, stay within range of enemy forces, and strike with pinpoint precision, all while minimizing risk to the pilot. And one of the A-10's most distinctive features is its titanium bathtub, a cockpit encased in 1.5 inch thick titanium armor capable of withstanding hits from 23 millimeter shells. This tough, protective layer ensures that even under heavy fire, the pilot has a chance to survive and bring the aircraft back to base. With its immense survivability, the A-10 became the poster child for rugged military engineering. The A-10's design was not just about protection, it was about functionality as well. The placement of its engines, for example, was deliberately chosen to reduce vulnerability. Positioned on either side of the fuselage, the engines were designed to be far away from the ground, minimizing the risk of foreign objects, like rocks or bird strikes, damaging them. Furthermore, these engines had the added benefit of keeping the aircraft's infrared signature relatively low, reducing its detectability by enemy missiles. The gun a heart of destruction. While the A-10's survivability might have been its most famous feature, it was the aircraft's enormous cannon that really earned it the Warthog moniker. In the 1970s, the U.S. Air Force contracted General Electric and Philco for a gun to arm its new attack aircraft. After a series of trials and tests, the GAU-8A Avenger, a seven-barrel rotary cannon capable of firing up to 3,900 rounds per minute, became the A-10's primary weapon. The sheer power of the GAU U-8 is staggering, and the aircraft was designed around it. In fact, the gun was so integral to the aircraft that the airframe had to be engineered to accommodate it. The cannon weighs about 16% of the A-10's empty weight, making it an enormous piece of machinery mounted at the aircraft's center of gravity. However, the road to integration wasn't without its challenges. The Avenger cannon generated massive amounts of heat and gas, which initially caused significant issues. For example, when the cannon was fired, the resulting muzzle flash temporarily blinded the pilot and the discharge gases threatened to clog the engines. Nevertheless, engineers managed to resolve these issues, ensuring that the A-10's cannon became an integral part of the plane's identity. A survivor through decades of conflict. Though designed for a specific role in the Cold War, the A-10 has continuously proven itself adaptable and capable in a variety of conflicts. From the Gulf War in the 1990s to more recent operations in the Middle East, the Warthog has shown its resilience. Its ability to stay low to the ground and stay on station for extended periods of time makes it invaluable in providing close air support, especially in situations where high-speed jets like the F-16 or F-35 would struggle. One of the most compelling stories of the A-10's durability came during the Iraq War in 2003. Captain Kim Campbell of the U.S. Air Force was piloting an A-10 when it was struck by enemy anti-aircraft fire. The damage was severe with the aircraft's hydraulics failing, but Captain Campbell managed to manually control the plane and flew it over an hour back to base, despite its critical damage. This incident is a testament to the A-10's incredible survivability and its ability to keep flying even when other aircraft would 
would have been grounded. The fight for survival. Will the A-10 be retired? Despite its proven performance, the A-10 has faced an ongoing struggle to remain in service. Between 2008 and 2025, there were at least nine major attempts to retire the Warthog, mostly due to its perceived obsolescence and the US Air Force's desire to prioritize newer technologies, like the F-35 Lightning II. The debate surrounding the A-10's retirement was largely based on its outdated design, lack of advanced network capabilities, and vulnerability in a high-tech conflict. Yet, each time, Congress and the military have stepped in to preserve the A-10's role in the armed forces. Support for the Warthog has remained strong, especially from those who recognize its unmatched capabilities in close air support, which cannot easily be replicated by newer, more expensive aircraft. In fact, despite the ongoing push to retire the A-10, it remains in service today. As of 2023, the US Air Force still had over 200 A-10s in operation, although a gradual retirement process began in 2023. The remaining Warthogs, however, have been receiving upgrades to ensure they stay relevant in modern warfare. The A-10 as a Drone Hunter in recent years, the growing prominence of drones on the battlefield has raised a new question. Can the A-10, originally designed for tank busting, be repurposed as a drone hunter? The answer, it turns out, might be yes. The A-10 has several characteristics that make it a viable candidate for this role. For one, the Warthog's ability to fly at low speeds and altitudes, coupled with its long endurance, makes it well-suited for targeting slower-moving unmanned aerial vehicles. Its low-tech but effective design allows it to remain in the sky for extended periods, making it a formidable adversary to enemy drones. Additionally, the A-10 can carry a large arsenal of precision-guided munitions, including the GBU-39B small diameter bomb, which could be used to take out drone swarms. Another aspect of the A-10 that lends itself to drone hunting is its potential for carrying counter-unmanned aerial vehicle systems. In recent upgrades, the A-10 has been integrated into the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System, which could be used to target slow-moving unmanned aerial vehicles or cruise missiles. These weapons are much cheaper than traditional air-to-air -air missiles, making them a cost-effective option for taking down drones. While the A-10 might not have the advanced radar or sensors to detect drones on its own, it could easily rely on support from other aircraft or reconnaissance platforms. In fact, it could even use external sensors or containers to improve its ability to engage unmanned aerial vehicles effectively. The future of the A-10, a legend in the sky. While it may seem improbable for an aircraft designed in the 1970s to remain relevant in a world dominated by drones and cutting-edge fighters, the A-10 Thunderbolt II is proving its worth as a drone hunter. Its low-speed maneuverability, unmatched durability, and evolving weapon systems give it a unique advantage in modern warfare. However, the aircraft's continued service largely depends on the U.S. Air Force's decision to retire it or keep it flying. The future of the A-10 might very well hinge on how it adapts to the growing threat of drones and how long it can remain viable as a tool for close air support and counter unmanned aerial vehicles missions. But one thing is certain, as long as the A-10 remains in the sky, the sound of its mighty cannon will continue to echo across the battlefield, a reminder that sometimes the old guard can still outshine the new. And that wraps up our look at the legendary A-10 Thunderbolt II and its potential as a modern day drone hunter. What do you think about the Warthog's future in the world of drones? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.